That was a very fascinating panel that you have. And I wonder if you can give us some takeaway points, especially about the metabolic changes that are elicited by metabolic, or in this case, metabolic bariatric surgery, and how they are responsible for the marked clinical effects that we see with regard to amelioration of diabetes and even a reduction in cancer incidence. Thank you. So I wanted to start by thanking the college for allowing us to have this panel. It was originally scheduled for a 90-minute panel with multiple speakers, and we had to cut down the panel to only three speakers. So, uh, but we were lucky that we have Dr. David Arderburn, Dr. Tammy Kimmel, and Dr. Oliver Barban speaking um, with the first talk really focusing on the health benefits and weight outcomes of bariatric surgery. And in terms of the health outcomes, where uh, Dr. Arderburn is going to not only focus on diabetes, which is a well-known aspect of surgery we have, so people are familiar with, but also the other aspect, beneficial effects of surgery, including on cancer. He will also cite some of the large PCORnet sponsored studies that have recently published over the last year. And I think that will be really interesting for patients to see how patients do across the US, not just in setting up a clinical trial or not only in an academic center, but in a mixed cohort of patients uh, across the country. Um, I think understanding the mechanisms of bariatric surgery remains really critically important and of interest to everyone. And we're lucky that Dr. Kendall is going to talk to us about that. And she has a very productive research lab, and I think we're looking forward to her insights. And then lastly, I think what clinicians are mostly um, challenged by is that when you have a patient in clinic, like how can you pr predict how well they're going to do, and therefore how can you provide really useful and individualized information to them to help with informed consent? And some of those topics will be covered by Dr. Oliver Varban. So very uh, excited about the session and look forward to um, having people join us. Thank you. You know, we have another panel on which I'm moderating on metabolic surgery. And Dr. Robin Blackstone is going to be talking again about mechanisms. Mm -hmm. And that brings me to ask a question. There is so much literature available on the neurohormonal mechanisms of metabolic surgery. And that we don't just achieve what we achieve by simple weight loss. We achieve it by inducing some change in hormonal milieu, in uh, neurogenic impulses to the hypothalamus and so on. But recently, and I'll hold this up for people to see, <laughs> Out came this article, which was astounding to me in the New England Journal of Medicine, which essentially says that uh, more or less what we do is, is due to diet. And, and let me just quickly read the end conclusions. In this study involving patients with obesity and type 2 diabetes, the metabolic benefits of gastric bypass surgery and diet were similar and were apparently related to weight loss itself with no evident clinically important effects independent of weight loss. And, and I thought this uh, uh, article, which omitted so much of the literature, uh, w was amazing. It was amazing that today uh, this can appear in, uh, in a reputable journal. So may I have your comments on that, please? Um, well, thank you for uh, bringing that paper up. I, uh, at full disclosure, we did write a rebuttal to that paper to New England Journal, and uh, earlier today I found out that the letter was rejected, so it would not be published. So I'm glad I have the opportunity to talk about it at least. So I think, um, you know, I think the investigators of that study did an excellent, detailed, and careful study. The authors are really great scientists, but I think the study failed to answer the question they were trying to answer. So their question was, does surgery, is there a magic to gastric bypass? Is there, we know that if you lose weight, your diabetes gets better. It's been known for many decades. And whether you lose that weight through diet or exercise or surgery, that's gonna have beneficial effect to your diabetes. 
what we as surgeons know is that there is a weight independent and immediate effect. Dr. Poris published this in the early 90s for the first time. There's been multiple studies that have been published to confirm this. And we see this ourselves. You do an operation on someone who comes in on multiple medications, maybe insulin, they leave a, a day or two later off their medication, suggesting this weight independent effect. Um, I think what the paper really showed is that if you lose 18% of your total body weight, your diabetes gets better. And I don't have a problem with the conclusion of that paper. I think if you can lose 18%, that's great, and your diabetes get better. But it failed to answer the question or the hypothesis they were after, which is, is there a weight-independent effect? And I think if the authors were really trying to answer that question, their comparisons should have been to patients who had had surgery immediately prior to weight loss and then studied the effects. People have done those studies before and shown that there is a magic to gastric bypass, there is a magic to, gas, uh, to um, bariatric surgery as a whole. So I, I, I share your surprise about the publication of paper and my disagreement with their conclusion.